Thank you for joining me for another episode of Sam's Tech Stuff. Today, I'm gonna to walk you through the process of adding an SSD drive to my Unraid storage server to function as a cache drive to amp up the write speeds to my Unraid array. I'll be using the Team Group CX2 one terabyte, two and a half inch SSD. This SSD can usually be found between about $75 and $85 on sale. Before I get into the process, if you're interested in home lab videos like this one, gaming PC and tech related content, get subscribed to the channel and then hit that bell icon below to get notifications each time a video lands on the channel. This is not a sponsored video, so if you find the video helpful, consider checking out the Amazon affiliate links in the description below. They're free to you, but it really helps out the channel in terms of earning revenue. So if you're like me and you really like the data that you're storing on your Unraid server, you're probably running not only one parity drive, but dual parity drives. This is a great way to add another layer of fault tolerance when it comes to drives randomly dying, just from regular use or during an array rebuild. The main downside to running dual parity setups, other than taking up another hard drive bay and a SATA port, is that it's drastically going to reduce your average write speeds to the array. Since Unraid does not stripe any of the data, your maximum speed will always end up being whichever drive you're writing to, but this will also slow down the writes ultimately. If you're running a one gigabit network, for example, you can max out one gigabit networks somewhere between about 100 to 111 megabytes per second. In my case, I'm currently running a one gig network, but soon I'm hoping to upgrade to 10 gig but currently, I should be able to max out the write speed to about 110 megabytes per second, give or take a few megabytes per second for overhead. For my Unraid setup, when I'm writing data to the array on the fastest drive with dual parity configured, I can normally hit about a maximum of about 60 megabytes per second. 60 megabytes per second is not actually that bad, but it's actually not that great when I'm moving large media files or doing some kind of full system backup. My max current network pipe, like I said, allows for roughly 100 to 110 megabytes. So I'm missing out on about 40 to 50 megabytes per second transfer speed, which is actually a pretty big increase, especially when you're copying over terabytes of video footage. This is where the SSD cache is going to come into play. The cache SSD in Unraid can perform a few different functions, such as temporary data storage until the mover script moves the data to the protected array, or depending on the share configuration, you can actually permanently store data on your SSD cache. This is especially useful for files that are gonna be accessed frequently by more than one client, or you can slice up that SSD cache for dockers and virtual machines. In my case, I have one dedicated virtualization server, so all of my virtual machines live there. I'll link that video up in the top right-hand corner. I will only be using this SSD cache for speeding up writes to Unraid in the video. This SSD is rated for about 540 megabytes a second read speed and about 490 megabytes a second for write speed under ideal conditions. This is the limit or close to it for the SATA 3 interface. I could have opted for a much faster NVMe drive to get closer to that two to 3000 megabytes per second. But in my case, I can't really hit those speeds from any of my PCs or servers right now because the drives in my servers and PCs just don't read or write that fast. The CX2 from Team Group fit nicely in terms of performance and budget coming in at about $78 when I picked it up. Since the one gigabit per second network connection allows for roughly 100 to 110 megabytes per second in terms of transfers, this SSD will have no problem matching that speed. In fact, I will be hopefully upgrading this server to use a 10 gigabit NIC soon. So I'm hoping to realize some of those higher transfer speeds somewhere between three to 400 megabytes per second. 
So before I get this drive installed, I'm going to have to stop the array and then power the server down. Now that the server is powered down, I'll slide it out and we can take a look at installing this drive. Since I decided to rack mount all of my servers, I have Unraid inside of this Rosewill RVS L4500 chassis. This chassis does not have native 2.5 inch drive mounts though, so I'll be using an icy dock 2.5 inch dual SSD to hard drive adapter. This adapter converts two 2.5 inch drives into the same form factor of a one 3.5 inch drive. Once the SSD is slotted in and locked in place, I can actually mount this adapter just like a standard hard drive, then we'll get the power and the data connected. Now that I can boot the server back up, I'll head back to my office PC and we'll configure that cache drive. Before I start the array, I need to go into the drive assignment page and actually make sure to add this SSD as a cache drive. Once Unraid finishes formatting that drive and adding it to the array, we can actually start. Before the cache drive was added, I was getting a maximum of 40 to 60 megabytes per second in terms of write speed to the array under the best of conditions. Let's retest that now. These speeds are looking much better. At these kinds of speeds, I'll save quite a bit of time when I'm backing up my PC, as well as backing up specifically YouTube video files that I'm working with over the network. This upgrade is letting me get pretty close to the one gigabits per second the maximum speed. So I am actually quite excited to upgrade to 10 gigabits as I said before, I'm hoping to see upwards of 400 megabytes per second in terms of write speeds in the future. I do actually have an NVMe slot on this motherboard. At some point in the future, when I find that this SATA SSD cache drive can't keep up, I'll probably upgrade to an NVMe. I can easily add that NVMe drive into that slot and probably max out that 10 gig connection, no problem. If any of you out there watching this are also experiencing slower than desired write performance to your Unraid array, I would definitely consider taking a look at adding an SSD cache drive or an SSD cache drive array. There are a couple of different solutions for the cache drives. You can set up a cache drive pool where you have two drives, for example, that mirror each other so your data is not completely unprotected in the cache array. In my case though, since I'll be running the mover so frequently, I didn't feel I really needed two drives to marry each other for the cache. As I explained before, even if you don't care about the write speed, there are a bunch of other functions that you'll probably want to keep an eye out for SSD cache in Unraid. Like I said, virtual machines, dockers, anything running locally. There are a couple other configuration steps and things we can take a look at relating to the cache on Unraid. So if you guys are interested in learning more about that kind of setup, let me know in the comments section below. Also let me know if you have a cache drive in your setup or if you already added one and you're looking to move beyond one gigabit networking. I'll be linking out to the CX2 SSD that I used, as well as some faster NVMe drive options in the description below, so definitely check that out. If you like this video, hit that like button, and then subscribe to the channel for more home lab, gaming, and tech videos. To get notifications of future videos, hit that bell icon below also. Until next time, you can follow me on Twitter, at Sam's Tech Stuff, on Facebook, at facebook.com, forward slash Sam's Tech Stuff or on the website samstechstuff.com.